In this video, we are going to be creating a small Halloween pillow, beginner friendly and made without a sewing machine. Hi, my name is Marie and this is the Caterpillar Cross Stitch channel. If you're new here, welcome. This channel is all about cross stitching and tutorials, so remember to like and subscribe so that you never miss a tutorial from us again. Remember to also check out our other social media channels like Instagram and Facebook for even more stitchy inspiration. This video is all about this very easy and simple Halloween pillow that we are going to be making in a very beginner friendly way. No sewing machine is needed and it will take you about 30 minutes to create this from scratch even though you maybe have never created a pillow before. After watching this video, you will be able to create your very own simple Halloween decoration. I hope you like it. Today we are going to be making a small, quick pillow out of this Halloween themed um, cross stitch. I've taken this from the uh, Touch of Magic stitch along this was one part of the pattern and then I just sort of inserted the scary pumpkin uh, from another part of the pattern and I will create a small, uh, really quick pillow out of this. We will create the pillow without using any sewing machine. So this is a tutorial for people who do not have sewing machine or don't know how to use it and would like a really quick way of creating these easy sort of decorations, whether for Halloween or Christmas or anything else you might have in a, in a small pillow shape. What are we going to need to create our pillow? So we will need to have our finished cross stitch piece. Then I have my trusted quilting ruler to help me measure the pillow evenly. I am going to use my friction pen to mark the fabric. Um, I also have these fabric cutting tools, um, some interfacing, a neutral colored sewing uh, thread, I couldn't find white and a backing fabric to use for our pillow. We will also need a couple of pins and this fusible iron-on uh, tape that I got off Amazon to help us bind the pillow together without needing to use a sewing machine. Let's start by measuring our pillow. Where are we going to cut? So there are two things we need to take into consideration. First is that we are going to need to have the width of the tape um, for the rim, rim of the pillow and we are also going to need uh, to take into consideration any um, sort of space we would like on the side of our stitched area. So I think I'd be happy with half an inch all around my little pillow and this tape is about almost an inch so I'm just going to try to make sure that I do the correct correct measurements and um, if I have a little bit of extra fabric left I'm just going to cut it off afterwards it's not an issue so I am leaving one and a half inch on this side and one and a half inch measured from here on this side. And let's do the same here. Now I'm going to measure my half inch border and I'm going to mark it with my friction pen on the wrong side of the fabric um, just so that I know where my sewing line is. Okay, now I'm going to pin uh, my cross stitch to my backing fabric. Um, 
just be careful as to which uh, side do you attach so we are go going to sew it sort of inside out and we are going to be turning it uh, afterwards so um, I'm only mentioning it because my fabric is a brushed cotton um, and I don't want this to be on the outside I want the brushed cotton effect to be on the on the outside of the pillow so that means that these um, the the right side of the cross stitch and the outer side of the fabric need to face uh, each other okay so let me just roughly pin this together So now I'm just going to do a quick running stitch all along our pillow. I can see that this is not quite perfectly straight, so I'm just going to try to correct it a bit as well. And all I'm doing is just a regular running stitch. It's not a back stitch, just a running stitch to help me keep this in one place. Like I said, this um, is for people who don't have a sewing machine or are intimidated by a sewing machine. Um, so obviously if you do have a sewing machine this tutorial is not for you because we are replacing um, the function of a sewing machine with hand sewing and with using of the uh, iron on bonding tape We mustn't forget not to sew it all around. We're gonna need to keep a fairly large opening for well, the stuffing. We are going to be stuffing the pillow through this hole and we are also going to be turning the pillow around. Um, so I'm just going to go a little bit in here and then a little bit in here and that's going to be it. I can take my guiding pins out and we are going to do a couple of things now. We are going to iron it, we are going to iron on an interfacing, we are going to iron our um, fusible tape and we are going to cut all around and then we're going to turn uh, turn our pillow so that it faces the right way around so let's let's do it so I've got my iron iron on a no steam setting so let me just give it a nice iron the pillow is going to be stuffed fairly well um, so some small imperfections are going to be sorted with the stuffing. I'm going to take my interfacing now. Remember any interfacing has got a rough side and a smooth side, so the rough side is the glue. 
so it goes glue down so let me just put it here glue down soft side up I'm just going to iron this on this is mostly to protect the stitching also if you are using Ada um, some Ada can have larger holes and I could imagine that the stuffing could like maybe seep through a little bit over time um, so this is just creating like a nice um, nice full background uh, for our stitching to protect the stitches to sort of um, glue the stitches together the ends are not gonna become loose or anything and it's also creating this nice bar barrier so that's the interfacing on and now we are going to take our iron-on web and put it as close to the running stitch as we can. I'm going to trim it afterwards. So don't worry if it looks a little bit um, too wide at this moment. Okay. I'm using a kitchen cloth on my table for demonstration purposes, but please use your ironing um, ironing board at home. Okay, and we do literally nothing else but ironing it together and the glue has fused together. Uh, don't try to sort of don't test it straight away. It's still warm, so it needs a little bit to just toughen up. I'm gonna do the remaining sides in one go, and then iron iron in one go as well, which is what I should have really done with the first one as well. just to make it a bit easier putting all of this together afterwards you can see this is already ironed on I mustn't forget that over here we need a gap so that's what we're going to create Perfect. So before we turn our pillow around, we are going to just trim everything and also we need to give it few minutes for the glue to toughen up okay so over here we've got our opening and we're now going to have to try to carefully turn the pillow inside out. I 
I am going to use a chopstick to help me. There is a special tool you can get to help you get into those corners. However, I think chopstick is all right. I'm going to iron this again just to help me set it a little bit. And now I am going to use this opening to stuff it with a stuffing. So I've got my stuffing here. Let me just. Uh... Fluff it up. And I'm helping my stuffing to firm up and to go into those corners with my chopstick. As I said, I'm going for a really, really simple look. Um, you could always try to spruce it up a bit with all sorts of trims like pom-poms or rick racks around it you could backstitch a uh, maybe spider web on the side um, you could sew in a little charm as well um, or you could use all sorts of like fabric sprays to maybe add like a bloody splotch or something like that um, I'm personally not decorating for Halloween too much so I just wanted like a nice almost low-key uh, pillow um, and I didn't have my touch of magic ready <laughs> so I just thought if you know we if I used the elements of it that I particularly enjoyed um, that it would make a nice small little pillow If you use uh, the chopstick or the tool um, for the corners, it is surprising how much of the stuffing actually fits in. So every time I put the stuffing, I almost feel like, oh, that's going to be the last batch. But when I actually use the tool to really properly sort of stuff it in, um, it does fit a fair amount of the stuffing afterwards as i said this is really um a very very easy way of creating a small pillow it's not meant to be perfect i mean we do, we are not doing this with a sewing machine um It is just meant to be a quick fix for something to put in your decorative bowl. And sometimes we just need these quick finishes, isn't it? To help us finish, fully finish something. Um, and not sort of hold our finishes somewhere in a box or in a drawer. I feel like I have achieved the desired fluffiness of this pillow, fluffiness and stuffiness. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use um, my running thread, my sewing thread, and I'm going to close it up with a stitch and that is going to be it. It's really that easy. 
I'm going to try to make this as invisible as possible bringing the fabric together but at the same time the thread shouldn't be showing on the outside I know this is not a very appropriate color to be using um, I'd I'd prefer something more neutral beige probably white Unfortunately, I couldn't find it. And you know what they say, done is better than perfect. So I am trying to embrace that philosophy more and more in my everyday life. And this is your sign to do the same. I decided to do this on the bottom, um, especially if you sew a sewing machine. It is quite visible the place where you where you're sort of closing it up, and I think bottom is kind of ideal for a stitch like this because most of the time it will maybe sit upright somewhere in a bowl so you won't be able to see the bottom it depends on how you display it obviously if bottom is something that is very visible then you might want to um, you might want to consider doing this closing either on the side or on the top you can also cover it like i said with all sorts of rick racks um cord you could also do this on the top and then sew in um a hanging sort of ribbon uh, to, to hang this on the wall um, my running stitch has created this sort of like wavy effect that I'm personally liking but uh, not everybody has to like it so just be aware that if you do your running stitch this is something that is going to happen Okay, once I'm done with it, I'm just going to um, try to distribute um, the stuffing a little bit better, um, just because where you're sewing, you always leave a little bit of space uh, for the last sewing bits. So just making sure that the stuffing gets in there as well. And that's it. It's our little spooky season pillow finished. It's not perfect, but when else to create an imperfect pillow than for Halloween, isn't it? It's part of the appeal. So if you have never created a pillow before, if you don't have a sewing machine, um, this is a perfect way to get you started on a very, very easy uh, a pillow that you can create within about 30 minutes, I'd say, once you have stitched your piece, of course. And it's a perfect way to start your decorative pillow bowl uh, or display somewhere in your house. I hope you liked it. So I hope you enjoyed creating this small Halloween pillow with me and I'd love to know whether you're going to give it a go as well. Let me know in the comments. If you'd like to create the same pillow and don't have the touch of magic stitch along 
pattern yet, head over to our website www.caterpillarcrossstitch.com where you can get the Touch of Magic as a full kit or as a PDF pattern. If you haven't yet, I would recommend checking out our VIP Stitch Club aka our newsletter. The link for sign up is in the description below. In return for signing up, you will get a 10% discount on your first order and also eight free PDF patterns that are a very suitable size for creating a small pillow just like this one. And remember, you can join our Facebook group with over 15,000 amazing stitchers who share their inspiration and finishes and joy of stitching. And that is it from us at Caterpillar Cross Stitch today. Thank you so much for watching and see you next week. Thank you.